Hi, I'm Dr. Rajshreena Budripad, and today I'm going to talk about an incredibly important topic, all about sleep. When we think about a healthy lifestyle, we often think about eating right and exercising, and we often forget to think about sleep. Well, sleep is a cornerstone of optimal health. Did you know we spend a third of our lives asleep or attempting to sleep? You're not healthy unless your sleep is healthy. This was once said by a pioneer and leading authority on sleep research, Dr. William Demet of Stanford University. Insomnia is a very common problem. In fact, half the population suffers from sleep problems. And since the pandemic started, sleep problems have gotten worse. Because so many people are working from home and spending more time in front of their screens, it's definitely affecting sleep. We're even seeing issues with sleep in children and adolescents. How do you feel when you wake up in the morning? Do you feel recharged and energized? There's nothing better than waking up full of energy and ready to start your day. This is one of the worst feelings, waking up tired with dark circles under your eyes and having to rely on coffee to get up and get going. In my practice, I see three types of sleep problems. The first is trouble falling asleep. The second is trouble staying asleep. And the third is a combination of both. To understand sleep, we have to talk about circadian rhythm. So this is your internal clock. It's your brain telling your body when it's time to go to sleep and when it's time to wake up. Sunlight activates your brain and this controls your circadian rhythm. So that's why it's so important to get outside and open the blinds if you're working from home. Sunlight affects your body's production of hormones, especially melatonin, which is made by the pineal gland in the brain. And this controls your body's sleep-wake cycles. A healthy circadian rhythm reflects nature. That's why I recommend take your cues from nature, wake up with the sunrise, and go to sleep when it's dark. Research shows that people who have a healthy circadian rhythm have better overall health. Sleep does the body good. It's a time of rest and repair. It's an anabolic state, which means it's a rebuilding state. Your body gets to rebuild tissues and muscles. It also helps to reverse aging because this is when your body releases human growth hormone, also known as the fountain of youth hormone. What else happens when you sleep? So sleep is a time when your body can really focus on all the detoxification pathways. It's when your brain takes out the trash. So there's a fluid that lines your brain called the glymphatic system. So it's actually a type of lymphatic fluid that surrounds the glial cells of the brain. So during sleep, this is when the glymphatic system is able to remove dead cells and toxins away from the brain. So this process is so important for your memory, your mental sharpness, and your mood. Sleep has even more benefits. It helps with hormone balance. So this includes both the adrenal hormones as well as the sex hormones. By getting a good night's sleep, you lower your cortisol level, and this can help with faster weight loss. It also improves your body composition, which means less abdominal fat. And a good night's sleep can also help to lower inflammation in your body. Okay, so we all have cell phones. And we would never let our cell phones die. That's why we always plug them in at night. So when we wake up, our cell phones are fully charged. So that's why we need to give ourselves a good night's sleep because that's how we recharge our batteries. And we all wanna wake up feeling fully charged. What happens when you don't sleep well? Well, first you can have changes in your mood like irritability, anxiety, and depression. You may also experience lapses in your memory in fact, long-term sleep deprivation can even put you at higher risk of developing Alzheimer's disease. You're more prone to infections, and you may get frequent colds, sinus infections, and other viral infections. And finally, chronic sleep deprivation can put you at an increased risk of developing cancer. Sleep deprivation can also affect your hormones and lead to weight gain. It raises your cortisol levels, which is your stress hormone from your adrenal glands and it raises your insulin production from your pancreas. Both cortisol and insulin will make you hungrier and promote fat storage. It also reduces leptin formation. Leptin is the satiety hormone that's supposed to tell you when you're full and help you to stop eating. 
So all of this is going to lead to more fat storage and weight gain. There's two areas in your brain that control your decisions. There's the amygdala, which is the emotional, reactive, survival-based part of your brain. And then there's the frontal cortex, which is the part of your brain associated with self-control and rational decision-making. When you're sleep deprived, your amygdala hijacks your brain, so you make poorer decisions about your food, exercise, and other things throughout the day. Versus when you're well rested, your frontal cortex wins and you're able to make better decisions about food. Burgers, fries, and ice cream? Or a nice healthy salad? Which will you choose? Your decisions may all be based on your sleep. Because if you're sleep deprived, your amygdala takes over. You're going to have lower leptin levels, higher cortisol, and higher insulin levels. And you may end up choosing these types of foods. Versus if you're well rested, your frontal cortex will be in charge. You're going to have higher leptin levels, lower cortisol levels, and lower insulin levels. So you'll be able to make better decisions about your food. It's quite amazing, but you can have a drastic change in your weight and body composition, all from a good night's sleep. The bottom line is good sleep needs to be a top priority for your health. You deserve an amazing night's sleep. Let's learn a little bit about the sleep cycle. Each cycle lasts 90 to 120 minutes, so you'll have several of these cycles over the course of the night. Each stage of the sleep cycle is distinguished by different types of brain waves. When you're awake, your brain is in beta waves. Then you enter stage one sleep when you're drowsy and your brain shows alpha waves. Stage two is light sleep, and then stage three is moderate sleep. During this time, your brain shows theta waves. Then you get to stage four sleep, which is deep sleep. Your brain activity shows delta waves. During stage four sleep, your heart rate, your breathing, and your brain activity all slow down. This allows your muscles to fully relax. This is the most important phase of your sleep to feeling rested and refreshed the next day. Stage four sleep is also the most important for your immune system. Then you get to stage five sleep, which is when we see increased brain activity and rapid eye movements. This is when you experience dreams. We also call this REM sleep. The quality of your sleep really matters. You could sleep for 12 hours and still feel tired if you don't have the proper sleep cycles. As you can see from this graph, you experience several cycles of REM sleep and several cycles of deep stage four sleep during the course of the night. Are naps a good idea? Sometimes a nap can help you catch up on sleep deficits and help you to recharge your batteries. But if napping makes your nighttime sleep quality worse, it might not be right for you. So listen to your body. Now let's go over a case example. Here we have a lovely lady named Sylvia. It's past midnight and Sylvia is ready to go to sleep. Let's back up and go over Sylvia's evening. So she had dinner at 8 p.m. at her favorite Italian restaurant. She enjoyed two glasses of wine, had spaghetti bolognese and tiramisu for dessert. After dinner, she came home and like many of us, she checked her social media. So she went through her Facebook, her Instagram, and then watched a few YouTube videos on her phone before bedtime. It's 12.30 a.m. and Sylvia is having trouble falling asleep. She finally does fall asleep, but right at 3 a.m., she's wide awake and can't go back to sleep. She feels hot and sweaty. It's 6.30 a.m., time to rise and shine, but Sylvia can't seem to get up. What a rough night. Why did this happen to Sylvia? Sylvia's dinner was high in carbs. The alcohol and the sugar caused her blood sugar to crash at 3 a.m., which is why she woke up. Also, browsing social media right before bedtime was a lot of blue light exposure, which affects melatonin production. Let's go over the top reasons for bad sleep. So the first is caffeine. Many people don't realize that caffeine has a long half-life. So if you're drinking multiple cups of coffee throughout the day, it's definitely going to affect your sleep. Next, we have blue light and EMF. In today's world, we are all bombarded with blue light, and it's definitely taking a toll on our sleep. If your blood sugar crashes in the middle of the night, you'll wake up, and you might feel hot and sweaty as if you're having a hot flash. If your cortisol is high from chronic stress, this can definitely cause insomnia. 
If you're having a food reaction, like you ate something for dinner that did not agree with you, then this is going to affect the quality of your sleep. I definitely see this in my patients who have food sensitivities, food allergies, as well as irritable bowel syndrome. If you're a woman going through perimenopause or menopause and you have low progesterone or estrogen levels, this can affect your sleep. Younger women with irregular menstrual cycles who are not ovulating regularly can also have low progesterone which can affect their sleep. Sleep apnea is a condition where your airway prevents you from getting proper oxygen through the course of the night. Sleep apnea can be diagnosed through a sleep study where they measure your oxygen level through the course of the night. It's very treatable with a CPAP machine or with a dental device. Finally, if you have a partner or a pet who snores really loudly next to you, this could be a problem for your sleep. Let's find the root cause of your sleep problems. This allows us to minimize the need for prescription sleep aids, which are habit-forming and have side effects. Now I'm excited to share with you some of my tips for a beautiful night's sleep. Tip number one, limit yourself to one caffeinated beverage in the morning. I recommend setting 12 noon as your caffeine curfew because many of us are slow metabolizers of caffeine. So even one cup of coffee in the afternoon can affect our nighttime sleep. In the evenings, I recommend trying some herbal teas. My favorites are chamomile tea as well as rose tulsi teas. These have a very nice calming effect on the body. Tip number two, limit your exposure to blue light after dinner. Remember, blue light suppresses your brain's production of melatonin. But many of us have work to do after dinner. You can use blue light glasses and blue light screens on your computers to help reduce the exposure to blue light. However, I find that using electronic devices in general is very stimulating to the brain. So regardless of the blue light, it can still affect your sleep. Try to find other activities you can do in the evening such as talking to your loved ones or reading a book, which is a lot more calming on the mind. Limit your exposure to EMF in the bedroom. So try not to sleep right next to your cell phone. And if you do, be sure to put it on airplane mode. Tip number three, take magnesium and calcium at bedtime. These two minerals work synergistically to help you get a deep, restful sleep. They also help with muscle recovery at night. Most people are deficient in both magnesium and calcium. Did you know magnesium is the calming mineral? It helps to reduce anxiety, lowers blood pressure, helps prevent migraine headaches, helps reduce menstrual cramps, and helps with any kind of body aches and pains. It's really amazing. The exact dosing on the magnesium and calcium should be based on your bowel habits because magnesium loosens the bowels and calcium can be constipating. For some of my patients with constipation, we use magnesium by itself. For my patients with loose stools who are unable to tolerate oral magnesium, we can try topical magnesium in the form of an oil or a spray that they can massage on their body at bedtime. Tip number four, eat a balanced meal at dinner. Remember to have protein, fat, and fiber so that your blood sugar will remain stable. Skip the cocktail and high sugar dessert because these are going to cause your blood sugar to crash in the middle of the night, causing you to wake up. Some people even experience hot flashes when their blood sugar is unstable. If you eat dinner quite early, you might want to consider a little bedtime snack. I recommend something with protein and fat to help stabilize your blood sugar throughout the night. For example, you could eat a handful of nuts or you can make hot golden milk. So this is a milk of your choice made with turmeric and honey, and you can even stir in some collagen protein. It's also good to be aware of your food allergies and sensitivities, because if you eat something that doesn't agree with you, it can cause digestive upset, and this can affect the quality of your sleep. Tip number five, take a nice warm shower or hot bath before bedtime. Not only is it super relaxing, but it raises your core body temperature. When you get out of the shower or bath, your body temperature goes down, and this signals your brain and your body that it's time for sleep. You can also add some Epsom salts to your bath. Epsom salts are high in magnesium, which remember is the calming mineral. So it'll help relax your muscles and also helps to promote all the detox pathways in your body. Tip number six is meditation. 
We all live fast-paced lives and we're all bombarded with stress every day. One of the reasons people don't sleep well is because they have high levels of the stress hormone cortisol. Meditation is a powerful technique to help you naturally reduce your cortisol levels. During meditation, when you close your eyes and focus on your breathing, it helps to quiet your mind and calm your body. Did you know meditation actually changes your brain waves? You actually go into theta waves, which is similar to a sleep state. Research shows that meditation helps to increase your production of feel-good hormones and endorphins. In addition to lowering cortisol, it also helps lower inflammation in the body. I recommend 5 to 15 minutes of meditation once or twice a day. This can really transform your health and your sleep. Tip number 7 is exercise. Did you know that when you exercise during the day, your body releases certain hormones? So when you go to sleep at night, your body focuses on rebuilding the tissues and muscles, and this gives you a much deeper sleep. A study published in the Journal of Clinical Sleep Medicine found that patients with insomnia had a radical improvement in sleep quality when they added in a consistent exercise program. I recommend find an exercise that you enjoy, whether it's biking, hiking, dancing, or swimming, and do it regularly. Lightweight training twice a week is also helpful because it releases hormones that improve your sleep quality. Avoid doing very strenuous exercise right before bedtime because this will raise your core body temperature and your cortisol levels which can affect your falling asleep. Tip number 8. Let's work on your gut health. Did you know that 90% of your body's serotonin is actually made in the lining of our gut? Serotonin is the building block to melatonin, the sleep hormone. What's amazing is that the gut has been found to contain at least 400 times more melatonin than the pineal gland in your brain. They've even done studies on rats where they removed the pineal gland from the brain, and this had no impact on melatonin production from the gut. That's why we call the gut the second brain. There's definitely a link between your gut microbiome and your mood as well as your sleep. If you're struggling from insomnia, we need to look more closely at your second brain, which is your gut, and figure out how we can improve the health of your microbiome. Tip number nine, let's work on your hormones. If your hormones are out of balance, this can affect your sleep. Cortisol is the stress hormone made from the adrenal glands. Many of us have chronically elevated cortisol levels due to chronic stress. This can definitely interfere with sleep quality. In my practice, I like to evaluate cortisol production using an adrenal saliva test. This allows the patient to collect their saliva at several times throughout the day and send it frozen to the lab. The lab then generates a graph showing us exactly what's happening with cortisol levels throughout the day. If we find that high cortisol is the root cause of your sleep problems, the good news is we can treat this using lifestyle changes as well as certain supplements to help reduce cortisol levels. If you're a woman going through perimenopause or menopause and have low progesterone or estrogen levels, this could be affecting your sleep. The good news is these types of hormone imbalances can be treated with bioidentical hormone replacement. In my practice, my preference is to use bioidentical hormones, which have the same identical chemical structure to hormones in the human body. I also pay close attention to the thyroid gland. We want to make sure your thyroid is functioning optimally by checking a full thyroid panel. I like to think of the thyroid as the thermostat, controlling all the other hormones and glands in your body. The other big hormone is insulin. Insulin is made by your pancreas and controls blood sugar uptake. If you have a high fasting insulin, we call this insulin resistance. Insulin resistance gives us a clue that there may be inflammation, blood sugar issues, and high cortisol issues, and all of these can affect your sleep. Tip number 10. Try natural supplements with a doctor's guidance. I recommend checking with your doctor because if you're on prescription medications, there can be drug interactions with some of these natural supplements. Melatonin has extensive research showing its efficacy for sleep, and it's also quite safe with minimal side effects. I always recommend taking the lowest dose possible to help your sleep. 
or you can gradually try to wean down the dose. 5-HTP is the precursor to serotonin, which is then the precursor to melatonin. So 5-HTP often helps with anxiety, mood, and sleep. However, if you're on an SSRI type antidepressant, don't take 5-HTP because there is a drug interaction and can increase your risk of serotonin syndrome. Pharmagaba is a calming neurotransmitter in the brain. It binds to GABA receptors in the brain which promote sleep and reduce anxiety. Phosphatidylserine is a type of phospholipid, which is a component of all cell membranes. It is considered protective on the brain, helping with mental sharpness and memory. And it also helps to lower cortisol levels, which can help with sleep. Valerian is an herbal product that comes from a flowering plant. Research shows it can be effective in improving sleep without having many side effects. Tip number 11. Diffuse lavender essential oil for one hour before bedtime. Lavender is powerful at reducing anxiety and stress and can help you fall asleep. This is a great time to do something relaxing, like read a book, and you won't be able to keep your eyes open. Tip number 12. Go to bed early. Benjamin Franklin once said, early to bed, early to rise, makes a man healthy, wealthy, and wise. It's best to get to bed before 10 p.m. because your body's peak production of melatonin and human growth hormone occur between 10 p.m. and 2 a.m. Keep to a consistent bedtime and wake-up time even on the weekends. This helps keep your circadian rhythm on schedule. Tip number 13. Keep your bedroom nice and cool. Ever wonder why hotel rooms are so cold? It turns out ideal sleep temperature is somewhere between 65 and 72 degrees Fahrenheit. Find your ideal sleep temperature. Tip number 14. Sleep in a quiet environment. If your partner snores, you may need to get a good pair of earplugs. Or it may be best to sleep in a separate room. So give your partner a good night kiss and give yourself a night of sweet dreams. Tip number 15. Try other healing modalities. If you're struggling with chronic pain, anxiety, or stress, you may want to try acupuncture, massage, yoga, or NAET. NAET stands for Nambudripad's Allergy Elimination Technique. It was discovered by my mother-in-law, Dr. Devi Nambudripad, and is now done around the world. You can learn more about NAET by going to www.naet.com. Tip number 16. Plan your sleep so you can wake up naturally without an alarm clock. If you do need to set an alarm clock as a backup, try to go to bed early enough so you can wake up before your alarm clock. You're more likely to feel awake and refreshed if you wake up naturally at the end of a sleep cycle. Tip number 17 is vitamin G, or grounding, also known as earthing. When we put our feet on the grass or the sand, this allows electrons to move freely between the earth and the grounded human body. Have you ever touched something and gotten an electric shock? This is because the human body accumulates a lot of positive ions. When we put our bare feet on the earth, it allows the negative electrons to enter our body and neutralize the free radicals. One way to reduce inflammation and cortisol in our body is to spend more time in contact with the earth. The Earth's magnetic resonances vibrate at the same frequency as our heart rhythms and our brain waves, and these frequencies are calming and healing on the body. So if you're struggling from insomnia, try grounding 5 to 10 minutes every day, and watch your sleep quality improve. Hope you enjoyed these tips on many different natural ways of improving your sleep quality. Which tips are you going to try? In summary, sleep is a cornerstone of good health. It impacts your metabolism and your weight, influences your hormone levels, helps to reverse aging, improves your mood, mental sharpness, and memory, helps to strengthen your immune system, and helps your overall performance. Hope you enjoyed this video, and please share it with your friends and family. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel so you can get updated when I create new videos. Thanks so much for watching, and have a wonderful day.